well published now that lobsters don't seem to have any kind of aging process. Um, nobody's been able to find an old lobster and they've not detected it in aging. But if you think about it, it's only like been in the last hundred years when people even thought of asking questions like that, how long do animals live? And so they've been studying some of these animals and they find out that lobsters don't seem to have any aging process. Um, that's not, it's also other animals, tortoises, clams, uh, some whales, some fish, some birds. They've all come under this heading of having negligible senescence, what they call that. They have no detectable aging process. Charles Darwin's pet tortoise just recently died at something close to 200 years old. And if I remember correctly, in the 1960s, Encyclopedia Britannica said the tortoise is only lived to be 80 years old. It's just that people are learning as we go. But so, so the question is, what's going on with these animals? And if they can live forever, why can't we? That's the title of the talk. Now, we do have some cells in our body that do apparently live forever. Our reproductive cells, our germline cells, the cells that pass on from one generation to another and are responsible for producing our sperm and our egg cells. And also, they're responsible for building the rest of the cells of our body. But they're the subset of cells that just get passed on from one generation to another for thousands and thousands of years. These reproductive cells don't have any aging process. And if they did, it's, it makes sense to think that our children would be born older than we are, or at least as old as we are. But they're not, they're born young, even though they come from our own cells. So there's something funny about our reproductive cells, too. So this is what I'm going to be talking about today. I am Bill Andrews. I discovered human telomerase. Uh, I led the research at Jerome Corporation that discovered it, at least. I'm not going to go into a lot of background about telomeres and telomeres. I'm going to do a little bit at the beginning because Dr. C.D. Hessel talked about this stuff the other day, and hopefully all of you were there for that, which gives me the opportunity to skip that and get into some more exciting data and stuff. But I did, this, I did do the research that discovered human telomerase back in the mid-1990s. I was awarded in second place for the United States Inventor of the Year for that discovery. Uh, I've been a telomere biologist now for 20 years, though I've been in biotech for 32 years. Uh, spent most of my first, I guess I'd be 12 years, focused on cardiovascular cancer and inflammation research at various biotech companies. I presently have 45 U.S. issued patents on telomerase, and I'm founder, president, and CEO of a company called Sierra Sciences in Reno, Nevada, that is 100% focused on trying to figure out how to turn the telomerase gene on and lengthen our telomeres to make us like some of these animals that live forever or don't have any detectable aging process. So <clears throat> I don't call it aging anymore. Um, when we first started talking about telomeres, I know this is going off and on here. People hear me when I, okay, so. I don't call it aging. When we first started, it was, the goal was to find a cure for aging. I still use that term sometimes, but right now there's so much that's been discovered that is associated with telomere. And it's not just aging anymore. So I call it short telomere disease. Now, still, some people object to me calling it a disease because it's normal. We all have it. So we can't call it a disease. But I just say, well, when we figure out a way to prevent this disease, then we can call it a disease. Everybody has called it a disease. But right now, I call it short telomere disease. And so for the sakes, I mean, just in case there's one person here who wasn't at Dr. Hustle's talk, I'm just going to spend about 30 seconds to review what a telomere is. And to do that, we need to zoom in on a human being. And when we can do that, we find that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. We zoom in even further to the nucleus, to the chromosomes. We find that the telomeres are at the very tips of the chromosomes. I want you to think of a chromosome like a shoelace, where the caps on your shoelaces are the telomeres. So as we know, when the caps on the shoelaces get short, the shoelace starts to fall apart. The same is true for our chromosomes. When the telomeres get really short, they start falling apart. But right now, chromosomes are about 100 million bases. DNA is measured in units called bases. About 100 million bases in length. But the telomere is only about 15,000 bases. At least that's how long it is when we were first conceived. 
As soon as our cells start to fight, our telomeres start to shorten, get shorter and shorter and shorter. And by the time we become a newborn baby, our telomeres have shortened from 15,000 bases down to about 10,000 bases. Well, as we, as we grow up further, our cells start to divide more and more, and the telomeres, again, get shorter and shorter. Cell division causes telomere shortening. When the telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our, our cells lose the ability to function, and we die of old age. And we go over that again. We're conceived at 15,000 bases. We're born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. Telomeres shorten at about 50 to 100 bases per year if you are the healthiest of persons. Okay, if you are unhealthy, you smoke, you are obese, or anything like that, you can accelerate this telomere shortening, but you can't slow it down to something called 50 to 100 bases, at least not yet. And this is the only clock of aging that's ever been discovered in humans. Um, there's other things that supposedly cause aging, and I do believe in all of them, including oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction. I believe all those things are causing aging too. But I like to think of them as multiple sticks of dynamite that are burning inside of our cells, where each stick of dynamite is a different cause of aging. The important thing is which stick of dynamite has the shortest fuse. And right now, I think that is telomeres and humans, and as soon as we figure out how to put that fuse out, we still have to put out the fuse for oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction. So I want to congratulate my colleagues I worked with in the early 1990s when we discovered telomerase, Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Grader, and Jack Stosak for winning the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their pioneering research up to the discovery of telomerase for their work in telomere biology. So the best example that Telomeres have something to do with declining health and aging. Uh, is that some people are born with short telomeres. And these kids suffering from short telomere disease, they suffer from all the same age-related ailments that normal old people do, but they die of old age at, 80, at 20. Sorry, I wish they died at 80. But if we could figure out a way to prevent this telomere shortening, this is a cure for this disease. I don't know how many people are here are familiar with this, but there's also a lot of talk saying that telomeres don't cause this disease. It's actually a, a mutation in a gene called lamin A. But lamin A has now been published in several papers shown to be the cause of the short telomeres. So it's just a cause and effect. Short telomeres are what is causing these kids to, to look like this and to grow old quickly. And if we could find a way of preventing that, these kids could be living normal lives. Now, there's only like 15 kids in the world at any one time that suffer from this disease. And I can tell you, every scientist at my company would love to know that we figured out a cure for this disease. But we all suffer from short telomere disease. We all, ever since we discovered telomerase, there has been thousands of publications, peer-reviewed, scientifically peer-reviewed journals have published papers showing that all these different diseases I have here are connected to the length of your telomeres. <clears throat> and believe me, this list is far from complete. In fact, it's gotten so extensive now that I'm not aware of a single human disease that isn't associated with telomere length. But let, let, you look at the top left, you see some of the big ones. Cardiovascular disease, we have shown at Geron Corporation and other places that endothelial cells that line uh, surround uh, areas of plaque have shorter telomeres. Could be something like tish, tissue plasminogen inactivator might be produced at a lower level there. Nobody knows exactly what the cause and effect are, except for we know that there's shorter telomeres associated with cardiovascular disease. And there's been at least 20 publications supporting this idea. Cancer. It used to be thought that if you turned on the telomerase gene, you would give yourself cancer. This is actually one of the reasons why my company has no competition right now, because 15 years ago when I started the company, that was pretty much the general perception. Everybody believed that small risk would cause cancer. But because of my years of cancer research prior to that, I knew it was the exact opposite, and I got this company going. And now, 
all the data support what we believed a long time ago. That is, that it's not that telomerase that doesn't cause cancer, it's the lack of telomerase that causes cancer. So when telomeres get short, chromosome rearrangements occur, just like a shoelace falling apart. Chromosome rearrangements occur. And so when you look at cancer cells in the microscope, I'm sure some of you have done that before, you always see chromosome rearrangements. And that's because of the short telomeres that induce these chromosome rearrangements. So if we could keep telomeres long in our cells, it would decrease our risk of getting cancer. Now cancer is caused by mutations, and there's still other ways of getting mutations, so it's not gonna eliminate cancer completely. But it would decrease the risk of getting cancer if we keep our telomeres long. Also, a lot of data is now supporting the fact that one of the main reasons we get cancer is because our immune system gets weak. And our immune system, there's a large correlation between telomere length in your immune cells and the onset of cancer. <clears throat> and so if we could keep the telomeres in our immune cells long, we could help fight the cancer even when we already have it. So right now, telomere biology, finding ways to lengthen telomeres, not only looks like a way of helping prevent cancer, but it also help prevent, uh, offers a way of fighting cancer if you already have it. All these diseases have been connected in one way or another. I'm not going to go over all these during this talk. I do other talks where I actually will show publication, papers, and stuff like that. But because there's other things I want to talk about, I want to refer you to a website that we have as a database of papers. This is essentially a list of diseases and other topics on the top axis there and papers. It shows what paper, and the papers are on the right side. And so if anybody wants to look at papers that say that telomerase does or not, does not cause cancer, this is a good uh, source of finding those papers. Uh, so let me move on beyond that because I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about what can be done about telomere shortening. How can we, what can we do now? right now to prevent that. Well, the first thing I want to say is that I think it's important that we all know the length of our telomeres. A lot of people say, well, why know the length of it when there's nothing you can do about it? But I believe there is a lot you can do about it. I believe that if you know that you have short telomeres, I think it's going to change your lifestyle. Okay, you'll have some lifestyle changes. And <clears throat> so I want to talk about the fact that there are presently six different ways that exists for measuring telomeres. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, number one is the main way that we use at my company, but it's the most expensive way on this list. It costs about a thousand dollars to do each telomere length measurement with that procedure. Now, two of these things down at the bottom, they don't measure, okay, let's say the top four, they measure average telomere length. The bottom two actually look at the abundance of short telomeres. And I believe right now, but that's probably going to end up being the most informative way of looking at your telomeres. Nobody, still, nobody knows why the average telomere length has anything to do with overall health. But it might be the number of short telomeres, because we know the chromosomes start falling apart. <clears throat> when it, you start getting a whole not, a lot of chromosomes with short telomeres, that causes a decline in health. So it might be better to be looking at how many critically short telomeres do you have and that might be, might be the best measure of your overall health. Question, where would, this go, where would one go about sending a sample of the a sample in to have their telomerase measured? Well, as I understand, I'm, I'm not supposed to be talking about vendors and product companies and oh, stuff like that. If it's somebody here give me a permission, I'll do it. it um, I think you can answer a question. And if there's a question you feel that you can't answer, they are there Are there, there labs out there that yes, there's can four, there's four labs. Okay. They are SpectraCell, Repeat Diagnostics, uh, Life Length, to Long Health, and I think those are the four. Okay. Now, uh, the only one that does the short telomeres is Life Length. And that's in Spain. Okay, so what I want to say is that they are commercially available. These three protocols are commercially available. The Three of the companies I just mentioned do number two and four, and then LifeLink does number five. Okay, so this is the ideal kind of picture that you want to see when you measure telomeres. The bottom axis of this is the number of, this, okay, now this is not looking at people, this is looking at human cells grown in a petri dish. 
PDL stands for population doubling level, which means this is the number of times the cells have divided. So when you look at cells dividing from zero to 70 times, the y-axis now is telomere length. You can see that the telomeres gradually decrease in length. I mean, if all the lines we ever do for telomere length measurement look like this, then we would have really good ways of measuring telomeres, but they don't always look like this. This, is, this looks really good in, in culture. And occasionally, you'll find this is now y-axis, and instead of doing population doublings in, in, doublings in the petri dish, this is where you're actually looking at the age of people in the x-axis. <clears throat> and you can again see a linear decrease. But it's really rare to see data this good. It usually looks like that. I, I usually describe it as it looks like somebody took a machine gun and just fired dots at the table. And you need a lot of dots in order to actually to be able to generate a trend line. So that's one of the things wrong with telomere length measurements in the companies right now. They are giving very, very inconsistent results. They, they work, they, weak correlation, well, let me first go. The reason for the weak correlations could be people are born with tel different telomere lengths, the rates of cell division differ between people, therefore, more cell divisions, the uh, more uh, the faster the telomere shortening will occur. There might be different bi environmental factors, things like free radicals and inflammation and stuff like that also accelerate telomere shortening. But my, my belief is that the measurement tools just don't work very well yet. And so they get pretty inconsistent results. But they're good for looking at large population studies or looking for a major difference. So if you are somebody that, um, I, I, I've done a lot of telomere length measurements on people, and I'll sometimes find a 35-year-old that has telomere lengths of a 60-year-old. And that's, that's kind of difference will show up in any of the techniques that we're talking about. <clears throat> but if you're trying to look to see if you're slowing down the radio telomere shortening, I don't think a, a procedure exists yet, but hopefully there will be pretty soon in the next few years. But right now, these, these, coral, these things are only good for big differences or large population studies. So the next best thing you can do is find out ways to decrease the rate of telomere shortening, especially if you find somebody that does have uh, very short telomeres. You want to get them on some kind of program that will get them to decrease the rate of the telomere shortening as it is. And in bottom line, it's pretty much reducing oxidative stress and reducing inflammation. Because those two things are the main things that cause what I call accelerated telomere shortening. The first thing I want to do is point out that exercise is a really, really good way to keep your telomeres from shortening too fast. And I'm going to be showing a bunch of data here. This is data from a lab in Germany where they looked at, okay, the bottom axis here is young controls, young athletes, age controls, and aged athletes. athletes. And again, the y-axis, the y-axis is always telomere length. So you can see young controls, so controls in this case would be non-athletes. Young controls and young athletes pretty much have fairly large telomeres. Age controls, the third one over, has really short telomeres because They've been, their cells have been dividing, and a lot of other things have been happening, and the telomeres have been getting shorter as they age. But it's, what it's seen is that with aged athletes, they actually have longer telomeres. Okay, now, this these telomeres are actually looking longer than the, the young people, and I think that's more because of the inaccuracies of telomere length measurement. But it's still showing, I think it's very significantly different from the age controls. In this case, they were looking at the granule sites in the blood, and they did an equivalent study with the lymphocytes and got the exact same result, which I think adds support for the idea that it's not just being explained by uh, inaccurate measurement tools. So telomere length, so it seems as if uh, a lot of athleticism, a lot of uh, endurance exercise especially, can help keep your telomeres long. And it doesn't do it by turning on the telomerase enzyme to make them long. It does it by decreasing the rate of inflammation and oxidative stress. Now we, we, I'm going to let me finish that subject after the next few slides. This is another study out of Colorado, where again the y-axis on the left-hand side, or the x-axis is 
young sedentary people, young, uh, I forget what EX stands for, but it's exercise people, and then older sedentary and older exercise people. And again, you see the older exercise people have longer telomeres than the sedentary people. Uh, so they're both shorter than the, than the young people. And then on the right hand side of this graph, you see that VO2 max, the higher your VO2 max, the higher your, the longer your telomere lengths. So again, exercise, especially intense endurance exercise, is lengthening your telomeres. This is another uh, study from an entirely different lab, looking at all the way from inactive, light, moderate, heavy, and showing that as you, as you, the more intense your physical activity, the longer your telomeres. And, and in all cases, these things have been adjusted for age, sex, and all that other kind of stuff. BMI, smoking, et cetera. This is the latest data that just came out 10 days ago. Very dear to my heart because I'm an ultra marathon runner, and this is focusing on ultra marathon runners. And it's showing that uh, ultra marathon runners have telomeres that are 11% longer than, than people that aren't ultra marathon runners. And okay, so getting back to that subject that I was saying, what is going on here? <clears throat> we all know that when you take mice and you put them into a, one of these spinning wheels and they just keep running, they generate lots of oxidative stress and die younger than mice that aren't put through all that stress. Well, it turns out, and a lot of the, all these studies are saying the same thing. Humans, when we undergo something that induces a lot of oxidative stress, we have the ability to increase our antioxidants enough so that it overcomes the increased oxidative stress. And that, the net result is our oxidative stress is decreased. And so as a result, it's looking as if we are benefiting from reduced oxidative stress, unlike mice, mice from all the exercise. And that is causing our telomeres to shorten at a shorter rate. There's also, I don't know, very much published data. A few of these papers talk about how um, <clears throat> a lot of exercise actually decreases inflammation. And a lot of people find that a little hard to believe because anybody here who's run a marathon knows that when you run a marathon the next day, you can barely move your joints. You're so inflamed. But it, it turns out, and I've, I've seen this personally, when I run races all the time, I never have that problem. Okay, I can run, a, I can go out and run a 100 mile race the next day run a marathon, okay? That's something that comes from, I think, intense or consistent endurance. And I think that's what's happening here. Ultra marathon runners are consistently exercising and therefore their body somehow gets trained not to recognize their sore joints as some foreign invader and so their immune system doesn't attack and cause the inflammation. And so uh, we don't really know what's going on there, but definitely, Lots of publications are now showing that the more intense your endurance exercise, the longer your telomeres. Stress is another thing that causes, and I'm going to use this term a lot, accelerated telomere shortening. This is a, a study that was done with looking at caregivers of Alzheimer's patients. In fact, I'm going to show two studies of looking at caregivers for Alzheimer's patients. In this case, it wasn't the Alzheimer's patients they were looking at, it was the caregivers. They found out that the caregivers had shorter telomeres than the people and their friends their same age that weren't having to take care of somebody. So if you're a caregiver, you've got to take care of yourself because the stress is causing you to age at an accelerated rate. This other study here also looked at caregivers uh, from a totally different lab. This is actually from uh, this is Blackburn's lab, one of the Nobel Prize winners. Uh, they looked at how many years has a particular person been a caregiver? And even though, let's say the people are the same age, let's say they're all 48, some have been caregiving for 10 years, some have been caregiving for 20 years. Well, the more years that you've been acting as a caregiver, the shorter your telomeres. So another very independent study showing that caregiving causes your telomeres to get shorter, and it's, it's due to the stress. Childhood uh, maltreatment. So abused children. When they grow up, their telomeres have been looked at, and they find out that children that have, have not had abusive treatment when they were young had longer telomeres than the children on the right that had been uh, maltreated as they were, when they were young. So again, stress is causing telomere shortening. Depression is another thing. 
So somehow we want to keep people from being depressed. This is just a, a study from an entirely different study than anything else I've shown so far. So uh, again, the x-axis is just different uh, groups. Uh, telomere length is the y-axis. The first group is controls, the people that haven't been depressed. And then the next four things are different groups of like major depressive disorder, bipolar, uh, with bipolar with and without anxiety. And <clears throat> again, we see in all cases that telomeres are shorter with the people that are actually going through depression. Then there's obesity, diet, antioxidants, and smoking. All these things cause accelerated telomere shortening. This, this, this graph is, I think, the only one I'm going to show where the y-axis isn't related to age or something. This is now for the x-axis. This is a z-score. Z-score just means how different from the mean than the average you are. So if you look at the top four lines, these are things that are, things are good for you. Whole grains, cereal fiber, fiber, vitamin E, and antioxidant. In all cases, people that consume these things a lot end up having telomeres that are longer than average. Well, now when you look at things like polyunsaturated fatty acids, or you look at uh, obesity, high BMI, stuff like that, you find out that these people have lower, shorter telomeres than on average. <clears throat> uh, here's another data on something else on obesity, showing that the uh, uh, higher your BMI, the shorter your telomeres, that's the top left graph. Uh, they looked at serum leptin levels too, the uh, higher serum leptin level, uh, the shorter your telomeres. The bottom two graphs are just again showing smoking. Uh, you, you should get all these references. All, all the graphs here show the references. You can go look at these papers yourself and, and analyze them. Again, we're seeing smokers have the more you smoke, the shorter your telomeres. And the longer you smoke, the shorter your telomeres. Another graph showing a number of pack years uh, with telomeres length, you get, you get shorter telomeres the more you smoke, the longer you smoke. Omega-3 fatty acids. That's a, a recent, more recent discovery. Uh, there's been actually several studies, I think I'm only showing one here, showing that the higher levels of omega-3 that you have in your blood, the longer your telomeres. Vitamin D, same thing. The higher the amount of vitamin D in your blood, the uh, longer your telomeres. And I think they're recommending in a study that people should be taking 5,000 <coughs> units a day of vitamin D. How many? 5,000 5, units per day, I use per day. <clears throat> Attitude. This is a study that was done on just asking people how well do they think they're aging or how, how long do they think they'll live, things like that. And <clears throat> they found out that people that didn't really have a good perception about themselves, they're it's called self-perceived aging. Actually had shorter telomeres. This is showing their telomeres from the people that had a bad attitude about their telomeres end up having only 0.62. They didn't know their telomere lengths before they were asked these questions. But then the controls had 0.66, and this had a p-value of about 0.02. So the statistically significant. Now some of these things are, I, I, I've only seen one study on. I'd like to see more studies to actually start believing it. But this is, this is one thing I thought was interesting. And another thing that I thought was really kind of interesting was pessimism. Uh, people were essentially asked, do you think you'll live to be 100? And if you said no, you probably won't, is what they're saying. Because your telomeres are shorter. If you, pessimism is, is, is causing telomere shortening. There's no explanation for why this is. I'm showing the data just because I thought it was kind of interesting and funny. But it, it, it's definitely, there's a positive, there's a definite uh, statistically significant correlation here showing that the uh, uh, more pessimistic you are, the shorter your telomeres. So let me summarize. It said exercise, antioxidants, omega-3, vitamin D, don't smoke, don't be obese, reduce stress, reduce depression, reduce pessimism. All of these things can help with the length of your telomeres. And one bottom line has been mentioned in a lot of these papers is just be happy. Okay, there's actually some papers that I didn't show here. Uh, meditation, meditation has shown people that meditate a lot have longer telomeres than people that don't. There's actually some papers, well, there's one paper suggesting that meditation actually induces the expression of telomeres. 
I'm personally not going to believe it until I see some more, more publications showing that. But one, another paper that just came out recently that I'm not showing here is that it shows that household, family household income lengthens your telomeres. People with high family household incomes have longer telomeres than those that don't. So it says, God, this money does make me happier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite I don't understand that either. Oh, later to see if they're too short. No, they they they're talking. Pessimistic or pessimistic? What they're saying is that pessimism calls their telomeres to be shorter. Uh, but they it wasn't they, there was no span of time. They just brought a person into a room, measured their telomeres, and then asked them how long how long they think they'll live. And uh, uh, they found out that. If you're happy, you will achieve what's short. You, you, no, nothing. There isn't. That, that's why I'm saying that. That I'd like to see. I don't understand the pessimism. They don't really give a good explanation. I just thought it was interesting. Say it again. Yeah, the pessimism, the pessimism, and the be happy part. I don't have any data for. Okay, it's just there's a tendency with some of these papers to to speculate that this is might be what's going on. The happier you are, maybe the longer your chances. Um, <clears throat> So there's a you like. um. <laughs> and, and since money makes you happy, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the most exciting stuff is what is most dear to my heart right now in my research is finding ways to lengthen your children. Everything I've been talking to so far has been finding ways to prevent the accelerated cylinder shortening. But you can only prevent it so much to where you get your telomeres to shorten at about 50 to 100 bases a year. Now, I want to find ways to actually lengthen the telomeres. And this, this is, okay, so we, we knew, we started this enzyme telomerase back when I was working at Geron Corporation. This is a cartoon that the green squiggle line is the DNA molecule. The factory looking thing over on the right is the telomerase enzyme. Telomerase binds to the end of the chromosome and lengthens the telomeres. And we discovered this by you know, understanding that our reproductive cells don't age, and this enzyme in our bodies only found in our normal bodies is only found in our reproductive cells. <clears throat> and so what I want to do is I want to just kind of explain what's going on here. Think of telomere shortening as like a ticking clock. So every time a cell divides, the clock ticks once. And it divides again, clicks again, it ticks again, the cell divides again, it ticks again. <clears throat> in our reproductive cells, every time a cell divides, it ticks, but then telomerase pushes it back. It ticks again, every time the next time a cell divides, telomerase again pushes it back. And again, it pushes it back. Now we have found from in, 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 in a little petri dish, and in some data I'll show you in a minute that by, if we increase the telomeres even higher, it actually ticks and ticks and ticks backward. Essentially, reversing the aging. And, and I, I said I wasn't gonna use the word aging, but I meant aging and declining health. So it's only found in our reproductive cells, and it's found in every cell of a lobster, okay? And this is now, this is the paper published. You can get the reference if you get the slides. <clears throat> this is showing that that the reason why the, there's longevity in lobsters is because they have telomerase expressed in every one of their cells and they do not have telomere shortening. Now what's also exciting about this is that, remember I said that people used to believe that telomerase would cause cancer. These lobsters don't get cancer. Very low incidence of cancer in lobsters. So it's, it's the exact opposite of what used to be thought is, is actually now fits in with what people readily believe now is that the lack of telomerase causes cancer. The presence of telomerase is actually going to decrease the risk of cancer. And then there's a study that just came out by one of the scientists, Ron Pennell, who up until 2005 was very outspoken, saying that telomerase would cause cancer. Another scientist that was saying this a lot was Dr. Maria Blasco. They were both saying that telomerase could cause cancer. So Rhonda Pennell spent years and years doing this experiment where he created these engineered mice 
or you could turn on the claw machine off and on and lengthen the tail runs or shorten the tail runs at will. <clears throat> now, think of, think of a gene, if, turn a gene on and off. Think of it as there's a, a lock and you need a key to stick into that lock and turn the gene on or stick the key into the lock and turn the gene off. Well, to this day, nobody knows what that lock is. Okay, in humans or in mice or anything. It's, it's, it's intense amounts of research has gone into it, especially by my lab and what hundreds of labs all over the world. Nobody's been able to figure out what that lock is. So what Ron DePinnell did is he took out the lock and replaced it with a lock that he did understand and a lock that he did have the key for. Okay? In this case, he took that he put the estrogen receptor promoter in, in front of the telomerase gene and then used dihydro uh, um, uh, as the key that would turn on the gene. So he could actually get mice to turn telomerase on and off by just feeding them uh, dihydro tamoxifen. So what he did, he first got the uh, mice to get really, really short telomeres, which usually doesn't happen in mice. That was an exercise in, in itself. Because mice usually die, okay, when I was talking about the sticks of dynamite, I was saying what's, what stick of dynamite has the shortest fuse? I said in humans it's telomeres. In mice, it's oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is what kills mice. Their telomeres are still very long when they die of old age, if, if you want to call it old age. So their oxidative stress is killing them. Mm -hmm. So he had, first he engineered some ways to make it so that he could get the telomeres really short. So now he was getting mice that age by telomere shortening. So he essentially, he didn't lengthen, he didn't shorten the fuse for the oxidative stress of the stick of dynamite. He shortened the fuse for the stick of dynamite. So now the mice were actually dying of old age at like two years old. And these mice looked really incredible. They, they looked normal at birth and younger age. But when they got older, they started looking a lot like humans, the way humans age with male pattern baldness, hair falling out, brain size is getting smaller, all of these uh, intestines getting smaller, uh, suffering from Alzheimer's, all these things were happening with these mice. Uh, but when he turned it back on, when first of all, he had to turn it back on, he, he got he got these mice to become healthy again and apparently younger again. So the press releases came out saying telomerase reverses aging process. And Dr. Hessel showed you a video of Diane Sawyer interviewing Dr. Von McKinnell the day before yesterday. So you probably saw Dr. Von McKinnell saying it was a remarkable reversal of the aging process. Now remember, this is a guy who was doing this experiment to prove me wrong that he was saying that these mice were all going to get cancer. He was really blown away when he saw these mice get younger. Yeah. Could it be a, a repair mechanism through the replication that it's repairing the telomeres? Well, the telomeres aren't getting damaged, they're just getting shorter. Okay? And shorter shortness when cell division isn't caused by damage, it's caused by the lack of the ability of the, for the cell to replicate again. Okay? That's a long answer, but I can come back to this after the presentation is over. But here's what they saw in the study they saw one, when you, when you, Got these telomeres to be really short, and the mice looked really old. I mean, these mice couldn't walk around, they couldn't reproduce anymore, their brain size has gotten smaller, they couldn't remember how to go through a maze that they used to know how to go through. Uh, lots of different things, they lost their sense of smell. But when he turned the telomerase gene on, he saw a 30% increase in telomerase, in telomere lengths. These mice suddenly could breed again, okay, P produce healthy offspring. Their spleen sizes got bigger, their sense of smell was restored, their brain sizes got bigger, they could remember how to go through the maze, which is suggesting that maybe there's a possibility this could even reverse Alzheimer's. And they saw a threefold increase in survival after 25 weeks. Now remember that other stick of dynamite fuse is still burning, so it might still end up dying from the oxidative stress. But in humans, humans we have 10 times the level of oxidative of antioxidants than mice do. So we don't suffer from oxidative stress anywhere near mice that what mice do. So I believe if we can solve this telomere shortening problem, I and others will at least have at least another 20, 30 years to solve the oxidative stress problem that we all will suffer from after we solve the telomere shortening problem. 
Okay, so that was one scientist, Rhonda Fennell, who now believes that telomerase will not cause cancer. Maria Blasco, this is her study. She did an experiment where she lengthened the telomeres in mice, but by a different mechanism, she used gene therapy. She infected the mice with a virus uh, called adeno-associated virus that carried the gene for telomerase. And so when this virus got into these mice, it produced telomerase in all the cells, and then the virus doesn't stay, it disappears. That's what's unique about adeno-associated viruses. But she saw when she treated these mice at one years old, okay, again, the x-axis is the number of weeks of, of age of the mice, uh, and they're missing weeks, not years, because the mice don't live that long, and then uh, percent survival. And what she saw, if you look at the top red arrows here, you see that there was a 24% increase in average lifespan. <clears throat> there's been, but there's been lots of things that increased average lifespan in mice, including antioxidants and resveratrol and things like that. But nobody has ever done anything that increased the maximum lifespan of mice. And if you look down at the bottom, you can see that she increased the maximum lifespan of mice by 13%. Again, she did this with another group of mice, which she treated them at two years old. She saw an average increase of lifespan of 13% and a maximum increase of, an increase in maximum lifespan of 20%. So this is really exciting stuff. This is, this is the only thing that's ever been discovered that increases the maximum lifespan of mice. And <clears throat> again, the title, I put it in, I mean, it's a long title, but I wanted to point out, without increasing cancer. This is one of the scientists that used to be outspoken saying that telomeres will cause cancer that now says it will not cause cancer. Okay, so we want, what I want to do, my company, is make us all like lobsters. I want us to have telomeres turned on, I want us to lengthen our telomeres, I want us to live healthy for a long, healthy and happy for a long, long time. So we are searching for things to turn on the telomerase gene in all of our cells. It's only turned on in our reproductive cells, and every other cell of our body is turned off and our telomeres get shorter. How do we turn it back on? So what we do is we have a proprietary assay at my company that does the following. I want to just explain that this is, for those that are really good molecular biologists who know that I didn't obey the rules of the central dogma completely here, but this gray bar is the chromosome, and telomerase is encoded by a gene, just like genes for hair color and eye color are. In this case, the telomerase gene is producing telomerase. I skipped the mRNA part, but uh, I think you understand. Okay. Next to every gene, there is a regulatory element. It's like a light switch that turns the light off and on and, off and on in this room. And in this case, in our reproductive cells, that regulatory element is on the on position, and therefore the gene is producing telomerase. But now in every other cell of our body, there's a protein that binds to that regulatory element and shuts off that gene. This is just basic gene expression. And that protein is called a repressor. <clears throat> what we are doing at Sierra Sciences is we are searching for chemicals, natural products, any kind of thing that will get inside the cell, bind to that repressor, dislodge it, and allow the gene to turn back on again. So it took us years to develop the assays, and then several, many more years to start doing the screening. <clears throat> this is our robotic systems. We can screen up to about 4,000 different samples a day with these robotic systems. And so far, we have found 39 families of chemicals that will actually get inside the cells and turn on the flaw machine. We've actually tested over 300,000 different chemicals, found something like 900 different chemicals out of 300 plus thousand that turn on telomerase. And looking at their structures, we've been able to divide them into 39 different families. Our strongest fit, and then we did things like medicinal chemistry, which would be to design new chemicals based on what we learned from the old chemicals to make it better. And right now, our most potent chemicals have a potency of about 16% of what we think it takes to actually stop telomere shortening. 
So right now the telomeres are still shortening in our cells that are growing in the petri dishes, but they're slowing, they're slowing down. And if we could get something like this, that's about eightfold higher, seven to eightfold higher in potency, we will be at a level where we will actually stop telomere shortening. And if we go higher above that, it'll start reversing telomere shortening. And then the hope, and I think the hope is pretty likely, that we will start experiencing the same things that these mice did. Okay, that we're fed the dihydroxy tamoxifen. No preclinical or clinical studies have been done yet. Everything we've done so far has been in the petri dish, in just human cells growing in the petri dish. And we've tried multiple different types of cells that works on all different types of cells. Our main screen we do with fibroblast cells because they're the easiest to, to work with. Then when we find it yet, we test it on immune cells, keratinocytes, a lot of other different types of cells. And it works in all cases then. We expect to do uh, be in human testing in three years. Uh, that's that's assuming we get all the funding we need. But right now, where we are is that we are about three years away from having something ready that's going to be eight times stronger than what we have and have low toxicity. I should tell you. We've talked a lot about how the fact that synthetic chemicals are toxic. These things do have some toxicity, but they're, in our assays, their toxicity is lower than ginger, ginseng, and resveratrol. Okay, so we already have some pretty non-toxic stuff, but they're not nearly as, as uh, they're low in toxicity as some of the other natural products that exist out there. So the natural product field still has an edge on us there with the synthetic chemicals. So even though there's no studies that there are already there are already natural products on the market, and <clears throat> that some clinical studies have been done. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is not published. The company that sells the product has it published on their website, and and I think it probably could never get published in the Scientific and Cure Review Journal. That's why it's only on the website, but. It does have some interesting stuff. They looked at several things, immune system improvement, vision improvement, top right, bottom left, skin improvement, and sexual improvement. <clears throat> now the, um, the sexual improvement is clearly just a survey. But the, uh, uh, the thing is, is that, okay, so I think most people that study aging will say that we, the number one cause of aging is our weakened immune systems. When our immune system starts weakening, that's what causes most of our <coughs> decline in health and age-related symptoms. The top, top left is addressing that, and it's got the, actually the most significant data right there. It's showing that uh, treatment for people that have been on this natural product for 24 weeks have an improvement in their immune system there. So that's, that's the unpublished data. The same group has published <coughs> a paper now, I'm an author on it, you can see me there on the far right, um, where we looked at a telomerase inducer, a natural product telomerase inducer, and in this case, we sent blood samples to Spain and had it looked at by this company we're talking about that looks at short telomeres. And what we found, and it's published in a clinical study, that, okay, so let me first say, looking at short telomeres, I think is, a more accurate way of looking. If you're looking for something, if you're trying to find a change in some data, it's a lot easier to not, to, well, if you take a really long telomere and look to see if it got a little bit shorter, that's really hard to do. But if you take a relatively short telomere and you can see that it got half its length, that's a little easier to detect. So looking at the abundance of short telomeres was an easy way to go. But the bottom axis now is people in the study. There are 12 different people in the study. Um, their blood samples were taken before taking the natural product and again one year or later. Okay, so it's greater than people. some of these people have been on for three years. But in 10 out of the 12 cases, you can see that okay, the black bar is the baseline, the next one is the number of short telomeres they have. So when you see that they they have this number of short telomeres before, and then they have fewer short telomeres later, that's good news. It says that their telomeres got longer, okay, and that's why they have fewer short telomeres. And if you look, you can find out, and then they, they got statistical analysis done on 
most of these. You can see that in all cases, 10 out of 12, the only exceptions are these two right here. They, all the patients had a decrease in the number of short tumors. That's very exciting news. It's the only clinical data that I believe in. Okay, the only clinical data that's come out yet that has any significant result. And the lack of clinical data is only because this field hasn't had enough time to generate it yet. Okay, a lot of people complain that there's no clinical data. It's just this is a brand new field and, and people want the product, so it's on the market. But uh, the clinical data is coming, it's just not coming yet, except for this bit of data. One thing that's really exciting <clears throat> is that number five and seven in that, they were the youngest people in the study. And it might be that the reason why they didn't see a de increase, a decrease in the number of short telomeres is because they didn't have enough short telomeres to measure to begin with. So future studies are all being done with the only people over 65 so that they have, can have something to measure. That doesn't mean the products are not going to work on people younger than 65. But it says that when you're over 65, it's going to be easier to measure your abundance of short telomeres because you're going to have enough to measure. So this is really exciting data. Um, there are other clinical studies underway. <clears throat> Study number three is looking at a lot of different things. I'm not going to go through all these things because there's so many. There's actually two pages of them. Again, they're looking at short telomeres. Um, but the, it's turning out that uh, the people that can do the measurements of short tumors are not able to be consistent. And so right now they're having trouble getting the clinical studies done. The first company that did their clinical study that I just showed, it took four years after the product was on the market in order for them to get this data. The, measuring telomer lengths is extremely difficult to do, especially with individuals. And it's, it's, I think the first group just got very lucky to get some really good data, and I think it's going to be a while before techniques are set up so we can start getting really solid data. But this, this study is underway right now. Uh, they're not getting negative data, they're just getting inconclusive data with telomere like measurements because the data is too all over the place. So these are the different things I'm looking at. There's study number four. Okay, nothing, nothing up until now has been a double-blind placebo-controlled experiment. That bothers me. But it's, it's hard to get people to participate in studies uh, when they're not making money, and et cetera, and they're not suffering from, quote, disease. Uh, so, so double-blind placebo-controlled experiments haven't been done, but one is underway right now, and they're only looking at short telomeres, and I think we'll see those results sometime in early 2014. So that's the end of my talk. I just want to leave with one message here that everything I've been saying about humans works in dogs, cats, and horses too. We've shown that dogs, cats, and horses age by telomere shortening. And they, especially with dogs, it's now been shown that their telomere shortening occurs at a much faster rate than humans. And there's been a study that came out showing that uh, some breeds who die younger, who, who have shorter lifespans, have shorter telomeres. Great Danes have a lifespan of only like nine years. They have the shortest telomeres of 15 different breeds that dogs looked at. So I'm showing a correlation, but wouldn't it be nice if we had a telomerase inducer that could make it so that our pets could live longer and not become so old and, and make us care for them so much. So thank you very much. Our model at Sierra Sciences is Cure Aging or Die Trying. And if you want to learn more, go to CureAgingOrDieTrying.com. Thank you.